Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna do a rundown of all the Jo Loves fragrances. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. Um, it's all about perfume. I have new perfume content every week, so do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I'd love to hear all your suggestions and comments, so do um, let me know any requests in the comments below and let me know what you think about Jo Loves. So we're all probably familiar with the Jo Malone perfume brand, um, which was started by the Lady Jo Malone, who's a British lady. So in 1999, she sold Jo Malone to Estée Lauder, and then in 2006, um, she sort of left the Jo Malone brand with Estée Lauder and sort of ceased any involvement in it. Um, after a period of illness, um, I guess she was just looking for like a big change. So what's quite interesting is that all the Joe Malone stuff that you see everywhere is not have any involvement of Joe Malone anymore and hasn't done for quite a long time. So in 2011, she founded Joe Loves, um, which is the company that is now run by her husband and where she creates all her fragrances. And the reason why it's called Joe Loves is because it's all about the different things that Joe loves. <laughs> So there is only one shop. It's in London on Elizabeth Street, about a mile from where I live, in a beautiful part of Bel Belgravia. And um, I went there the other day for a um, fragrance tapas experience where they basically take you through all the different fragrances. It was a really lovely experience. So I tried them all and I have them all on cards and I'm gonna take you through the whole range. As always, I will link down below to where you can get these. So for me, there are kind of three categories of Jo Love fragrances. You've got the citrus ones, you've got floral ones, and then you've got like spicy, woody, vetivery ones. So I'm gonna start off with the citrus ones. And the best seller is Pomelo. So Pomelo is like tropical citrus fruit. And the guy in the shop told a really lovely story about how when Jo Malone was in the Caribbean, like recovering from her illness, which had affected her sense of smell, um, one of the sort of first times where she started getting that back was when she like had a pomelo for breakfast, I think, and she could just like taste and smell all the, the citrusness of it. And it just obviously made her so happy. And that's what inspired the pomelo fragrance. So it is really like that citrusy, but there's also a lot of like greenness to it. So it does remind me of like a tropical um, citrusy, you know, sort of on a beach, you can get the woody green smell of the palm trees around you. So there's vetiver in here, there's suede and there's clove. And then she's added a wee bit of patchouli and rose as well, which helps make it a bit feminine and mixes quite nicely with those suede notes. But at first you really get the pomelo citrusiness, but in the dry down it becomes much more um, vetiver and suede -y. So next is Jo by Jo Loves, and I think this is my favourite, I haven't quite decided. Um, this is a really grapefruit fragrance, I really like it. Um, it's grapefruit, it's bitter orange, there's some mint in here and lime, it's just fresh and I can just imagine like waking up in the morning and spraying this and you just feel like so fresh and alive and ready to seize the day and I love my citruses and I just think this is a lovely citrus perfume. There's some cedar and some black pepper which come through after a while, after all the grapefruitiness has sort of died down and now on this card I can smell that much more but in the first sort of few hours I wore this after um, afterwards it was really all about that grapefruit and that lime with that touch of mint just really refreshing and nice this next one is kind of moving into the floral notes it's white rose and lemon leaves and what's really interesting about this is that's all there is in here there's just two fragrance notes white rose and lemon leaves you really do get the rosiness of it but the lemon leaves really lift it and make it a fresh zesty rose rather than a musty or musky rose. Oftentimes I feel that musky notes are mixed with rose and rose can get the stigma of being a bit like heavy and suffocating. Whereas this is much fresher, zestier. Definitely one of my favorites, really pretty and feminine, but sophisticated and womanly at the same time. So really nice. 
So next is number 42, The Flower Shop, and this is named after The Flower Shop, which was Joe Malone's first job, um, and it was actually in the actual building where the Joe Loves shop now is. It used to be a florist, and that's where she works in her first job as a teenager, and it really, really, really does smell like a flower shop. It really does. Um, you get that greenness because you know in a flower shop they're cutting stems all the time you know and all that like greenness of flowers really comes out and it just does smell like you've walked into a flower shop and then you also get sort of hints of all the different fragrance um, notes from the flowers. Lily of the Valley, Freesia, Peony, Iris, Jasmine. It's that sort of hit that you get when you work in, walk into a florist, the lovely like floral fragrances. Really pretty. If you know someone that likes floral um, perfumes, then this is definitely a lovely gift. Um, and if you like florals, then definitely try this because it's it's got that freshness of the flower shop, but it just feels so pretty and feminine, um, but also green and fresh, so like not too overly floral. Really beautiful fragrance. So next is orange butterflies, and I think the um, butterfly in the bottle is just so pretty. It's such a pretty bottle to have on your dressing table. So this is, as you'd expect, really orangey and citrusy, but then you've got like a neroli green note in here, petit green and orange blossom. So it's kind of like a white floral meets orange. A nice spring fragrance, I'd say. Also could be really nice and cosy in the winter if you want something light and fresh to sort of lift your mood. And I, I love the oranginess of it. And I think the bottle, so pretty, would be a really lovely gift. So next is fresh sweet peas, which to me really does smell like going up to a whole wall of sweet peas and smelling them. Um, but it's also quite citrusy and fresh as well. I think this is definitely one of my favourites, like really light and fresh and feminine. So it's bitter orange, it's ylang ylang, it's marigold, it's orange, it's pear. And then you get a little bit of rosy and cypressy notes in the base, but this is like a fresh orange summer's day having a glass of like freshly made orange juice sat next to a wall of sweet peas like very english british country garden summer and very simple and i think this would be nice for someone that doesn't want a very heavy fragrance they want something really light and fresh but still feminine and floral and yeah really beautiful name and i just so lovely in english so carrying on with the florals, we've got gardenia, which you guessed it, gardenia is the main note here. There's also some jasmine, some musk, ylang ylang again, and narcissus. So this is probably one of the most like floral in the range. You really get that hit of gardenia. So if you're a gardenia fan, this is one for you. But really quite floral, probably more autumn I would say I think that, that it, unless you really want a really heady floral then this might be a bit much in hot weather so I would go for this if you want sort of spring or autumn like you want something gardenery and floral and fresh but you you don't want something particularly light you still want it to have a real presence and then finishing off all the florals we've got roses 25 which is to celebrate like 25 years in the perfume industry and this is all the different roses that you can get really it's really really like rose petally um all about the rose but again not being too like musky or overbearing it's a fresh rose imagine going into the area of a flower shop that has all the roses and you can just smell them all around you think sort of roses on valentine's day this would be a really lovely valentine's fragrance i think and um, very pretty like really lovely so moving on to the more woody fragrances. Now all the perfumes are um, unisex, but I find that the the more woody, leathery and aromatic ones are probably um, more typical male than the citrus and the floral one. But obviously everyone's different and everyone likes different things. So Red Truffle 21 is really, really figgy. You've got a little bit of citrus when you first spray it and pine in the base but what you really get is like fig and truffle so very like warm and cozy um almost reminds me a little bit of chanel allure homes but 
or yeah really lovely figginess like very um i find this not masculine necessarily but like it's quite a powerful fragrance like fig is very sort of it has a good presence and there's a lovely fig body spray actually that they do that would go with this really well but so unusual to have truffle in a perfume if you're a fan of truffles and you like the idea of that fig with that woody base then definitely want to go and try and experiment with because really like powerful fragrance i would say so next we have shards of cedar and red thyme and those are the only two fragrance notes here so cedar and red thyme this is a bit more like a sharper wood that cedar note is like um almost piney with the cedariness and I think the red thyme as well helps with that sharpness. So this is much more like a, a woody, um, sharp, like forest, like forest in the morning after it's rained and you go up and smell a cedar tree. Like this is really for your woody fans. So next we have smoked plum and leather. This is really, really sophisticated, I think. You really get the plum and the smokiness and the leather. There's a wee bit of cinnamon in here, the cedar in the base, and there's almost like a liqueuriness to it. So this reminds me of like a leather sofa, drinking a liqueur in the sort of gentleman's smoking room, or old England, you know, fireplace perhaps in the corner with a Labrador at your feet, like very sort of traditional British leather vibes. And the cinnamon and the liquoriness really lift it and it definitely like means something. I can imagine this be a fragrance worn by someone quite powerful who really wanted to like make a statement, it's like the leatheriness and it's almost mysterious. Or someone perhaps wear riding a bike, wearing like a leather jacket, you know, it's really like has personality. That's the word I'm looking for, big personality fragrance. Next we have pink vetiver, which is pink pepper and vetiver are the two main notes. You've got some cumin and juniper berries, cardamom, ginger, amber, um, so quite a mix here, but the vetiver really comes through as the dominant note. And actually the two ladies that I was with at the event, this was their favourite fragrance, so definitely a unisex vetiver. Um, if you really like vetiver, then obviously you're probably going to really like this, because it's so dominant. But yeah, kind of quite a clean vetiver. I think the pink pepper probably makes this quite clean, a fresh vetiver and very sort of, you could wear this any season. I don't see this particularly being particularly seasonal. It's just good for the vetiver fans. Then moving on to the more aromatic fragrances, we have green orange and coriander. So you really get the coriander here, you've got that bitter orange, there's some oak moss notes here, and then a nice tonka bean to make it feel warm, um, and a pepperiness. It's almost spicy in the way it comes across, like if you like that sort of spicy and that bitter orange, it's almost like um, like an edible type smell. I think it's all the coriander, you know, imagine sort of like an orange and coriander in the kitchen, cooking with those ingredients, like that's really what it reminds me of. And then lastly we have mandarin, um, which is a bit of a hybrid of course, citrus and aromatic-y, because it does have bergamot and it does have bitter orange, but also pettigrain and thyme. So it's like that sort of herby citrusiness. Um, which almost comes across as aromatic with that herbaliness. I think the idea here is that it's all about sort of the sun and feeling like that effortless sunshine and that's what she's trying to evoke here and that's what she loves. But yeah, this is, to me, this is herby and citrus, quite fresh, um, but the herbiness um, helps with the, I guess, with the ciliage and, you know, relatively strong considering it's citrus. And I'd say that's applicable for all of these because normally when I think of a citrus fragrance, they can often be quite weak and not really last. I've had these cards here in my bedroom and they have been filling the whole bedroom with fragrance. The shop smelled beautiful and when I was wearing the Joe by Joe Loves, like I could absolutely smell it. So they are all eau de toilettes and um, the guys in the shop said that Joe Malone likes the idea of not just having one spray in the morning and then that's you for the rest of the day. So they're meant to be reapplied or you can mix it up and have a slightly different one maybe later on in the day. 
and she's got all the lotions and body sprays and stuff to sort of top it up throughout the day. So I think she very much didn't want it to be that they were so heavy that you only need like a couple of applications in the morning, that's it. But they still are of a good enough quality to have ciliage and to have a decent longevity. I'd say that they all come across as quite sophisticated, expensive, good quality. None of them smelt cheap or tacky and probably because there are none that have that like sweetness in at all. There's no gourmand fragrances that all citrusy or green or like spicy. She's not into gourmand ones at all and you know even now in the original Jo Malone there's not really many gourmand fragrances. So that's it so I hope you found it useful and I hope you enjoyed like discovering the range like I did. It's really interesting experience and really lovely range to discover. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more of the same but that's it so let me know what you think in the comments below and thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon bye